I make art as a form of research. This is the thesis of my talk. And a couple of weeks ago, we had a town hall meeting here with all staff and fellows. And Dana Boyd, um, the president, said, Data Society is a basic research shop that does empirical research. I didn't know what empirical research is, so I looked it up. And it's essentially, you start with a hypothesis, and then you test it over time with data and other experiments. And I like to think that storytellers do a similar thing. They start with a narrative, and then, then test the narrative with characters and plots in place. As an artist, I start with a provocation, a question, and then I try it by involving other people, inviting them to collaborate, and having conversations with them. So I focus on this very plastic nature of art. And by plastic, I mean to give form and receive form. So I'm not so interested in static forms of art, but this plastic nature of art. And as an artist, I try to create fiction, because I think fiction is a great place to be. And then also friction. And I try to shift between the two. And I'm really in inspired by a concept called social sculpture. It's this word to describe that social relationship between people become the materials of the artwork. And then the artwork has this potential to transform the society through its aesthetics and through its message. So what did I do at the Data Society for a year? I made dumplings. <laughs> so, so along with these two great computer scientists, like proper <laughs> CS professors, um, I made this dumpling workshop and invited other cohort to think about computation from a very tactile and tangible and delicious approach. So think about it this way. So you come to a dumpling shop, you order something, let's say veggie dumplings. Those are instruction sets. And the chef in the kitchen will repeat and abstract the instruction set. That's the basis of computation. And we can get into the details of the comparison between computing and dumpling making. Taehyun says it's important not to confuse memory with storage. Storage is like fridge. It, it's where we keep our stuff. Like CD-ROM is a storage and your hard drive is also a storage. Different parts of the computer are able to communicate over a bus. In a sense that we are kind of passing these memory back and forth. My hand gesture is called bus. It's like bus between a part of the computer to the other parts of the computer. Once instructions are given to different units, they can either perform serial processing. On one unit, does all the tasks from the beginning to the end. Or parallel processing, where a specific task is delegated to a single unit. One of you will just chop chives, one of you will just chop cabbage, and one of you will just fold. And it will be much faster. The process ends with output. And then the process ends with it's output, which are eat. usually very delicious dumplings. <laughs> And why do I do this? Because I think the pedagogy and performance are closely related. And the way that computer engineering is usually taught are very boring. <laughs> so with the help of the Data Society communications team, we produced this video, which has over 500,000 views online. So thanks to the data, uh, communications team for that. And I work at the School for Poetic Computation. And our motto is more poetry, less demo. And we invite a very diverse, diverse group of students from around the world to study with us for 10 weeks. And we teach computer programming, electronics, critical theory, poetry. And they're all equally important. And I'm happy to say that we're doing quite well in the sense that I feel like we're making an impact and fostering a new community of hybrid engineers and designers activists. So what do I do there? I run multiple sessions on an ongoing basis. I do administration, and I've recently been focusing on hiring teachers with new directions for us to go. 
and also thinking about scholarship models for marginalized communities. And I prioritize that the school is not a one thing, but the students come to the school with their own idea of what poetic computation could be, and they walk away with that. And I had a few opportunities to bring the school to this place and vice versa, and I'm very thankful for that as well. So during the fellowship, I work on the Processing Community Day, which was a large conference at the MIT Media Lab, focusing on artists, designers who use computer programming for creative expression. And to me, conference organizing is a social sculpture because it brings strangers together, it's bodies in space, it has material, material nature, and we do things. And I focus on the topic called convening for the first time. It was really important to think about what are the precedents that we could set for the future conferences? What is the we, uh, new code of conduct? How can we curate inclusive presenters? How can we get audience to participate? And this is the, about 200 people. In the photo, there's about 100 people in the space. And it's continuing without me. And so far, these projects have been about joy and poetics and aesthetics of computing. And while I think that's important, I also think problematizing technology is equally important. Because tech is not inherently good. And tech, in, tech education is, does not equate to empowerment. There's toxic meritocracy in technology, and then the colonial nature of tech innovation, and the complicity of working for tech companies. So this comes to the point of the uncomputable. Who gets to be computed, counted as a person, categorized, and represented, and who gets to resist computation? And I've been writing about this, especially in the context of disability community, because you know, the tech products are usually presented as like, oh, this is gonna solve disabled person's problem. But in fact, they don't actually ask or involve the disabled people into the research and development and just come up with a technology first. So I wrote a piece for the new inquiry called Artificial Advancement. Basically saying that when the tech focuses on cure instead of care, it's not good for the people who, who need the tech the most. And I started the disability reading group here at the Data Society. And we had three meetings this year. And it's a chance to bring disability studies discourse into different fields like academia or tech fields. And it's also a chance to get platform for my friends who identify as disabled person to have opportunity to share their work with the researchers here. And each time I collaborate with artists or scholars who identify as disabled and that fact of collaboration, uh, equal collaboration is incredibly important. And I'm super happy to say Chansey Fleet, who's in the room. Raise your hand, Chansey. Hi. Chansey is going to be the incoming fellow um, this year after me. And she's going to be leading the disability reading group. And she does a lot of things, but one of which was uh, she serves at the National Federation for the Blind. And she's going to be connecting a blind community to the research that we do here at Data Society. So I'm super excited about it. And I think a lot about maintenance, and I think about like maintaining a project is really much more difficult than starting a project. And if the project goes on without you, I think that's success. <laughs> the disability discourse, impairment, and illness is not just for disabled people, it's for everyone. And I held a workshop called a Flower Arrangement Workshop. And it was a chance for the cohort to come together and learn to arrange flowers but in a way to talk about self-care and maintenance of the care, which leads to uh, the shared um, understanding that we are all fragile, like we are all dependent on each other. The last project that I'm gonna talk about is distributed web of care. So here and in a lot of places, you know, people analyze and criticize what's wrong with tech. I think that's really important. But I think it's also important to think about how can we build something alternative. So this is where the arts and design comes in, to imagine and to build. So there's a lot of things wrong with the internet today. But I think we could imagine a world where decentralized, distributed, 
And peer-to-peer -peer network could be other forms of communication and building community for us in the future. So I've been doing this project um, to focus on care instead of control, and person instead of user, and unlearning instead of un machine learning. And I started a tiny fellowship out of my fellowship. <laughs> and those fellows are here now, but uh, basically I'm running a residency and a fellowship that is going to be a form of institution itself. It's a place, an opportunity to embody these different types of network. And in this photo, there's a, about 10 people holding strings together with uh, stickers that are passing onto each other. We're trying to imagine what kind of distributed network we could be. And it was an interesting experience to bring computer scientists and activists and artists together and not talk about the policy or the what's wrong, but think about the vision and play together. And it was great to involve Rishab, who was uh, another fellow um, who researched on privacy to be one of the speakers. And I'm fundraising for this project. And I'm selling shirts and hoodies. Because for one, to raise money, but more importantly, I think this discourse critical aspect to tech should be fashionable. Like, <laughs> I, I, think, I think that's more important than the money that I'm getting from this, is that I think people should wear about internet freedom and privacy and take ownership of that. So if you go to my site, the pre-sale ends in three days. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna wrap up to thinking about art as a research and then fiction and friction. So fiction is really important because in fiction, we can envision a future. We can think about ethics. We can talk about scenarios. In friction, we can talk about responsibility, accountability, and our reality. I have to say data society has been a really incredible community of rigor and care, just thinking about what we do and what the impacts are. And we can celebrate this care in a non-hierarchical way by publishing and collaborating. Yeah, the leadership here has demonstrated a lot of um, thoughtfulness in how the organization moves forward. And these are some of the folks that I want to just say thanks to who have inspired me, and especially the operations team who make things happen, and programs team organizing events like that, and other fellows and researchers like that. Um, I'm going to go back to school for poetic computation and do what I do and do more performances and exhibition. But I hope to see a lot of you in those events. Um, coming up soon, I'm hosting a party at the Ace Hotel Ballroom <laughs> in July 29th about distributed web. And it's like a real party, but we're going to talk about you know, these technical topics. Um, so please come check it out. Um, it's it's going to be fun. It's going to be free for all. And we'll be hosting a series of skill shares at the hotel um, with some artists that I really admire um, to share some of the thoughts about what the internet could be. So thank you. <laughs>